Good afternoon. I'm so very glad that you could join me today. Um, it's Saturday, March the 22nd, 2020. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church of 100 Mile House. And uh, this afternoon I'll be doing a podcast devotional with you. And I'd like to welcome all of you here. As you can see, I'm in my living room enjoying a, a nice crackling hot fire and my favorite beverage. A good day to curl up on a couch and uh, sit beside a fire and read the Word of God. I can't think of a better thing to do uh, with the day. There's a few things that God's laid on my heart that I'd like to share with you uh, this afternoon. And speaking of fire, I want to talk a little bit to you about fire. Fire has many good qualities about it. It can heat your home. It can uh, cook your food if you don't have any electricity. And I'm very grateful in the Caribou, the uh, rural part of British Columbia, Canada, where we are. And we have the opportunity to burn wood to help heat our homes and to uh, just provide that extra ambiance in our, in our houses. And there's nothing quite like uh, wood heat. It just soaks to the very core of you brings a great deal of comfort on a cold day and we're still in the throes of winter here although it's a nice afternoon I think spring is in the air we still have snow everywhere so uh, fire can be a really positive thing it can be a good thing when it's under control but there are times when fire gets out of control and if all of you recall back to 2017 when many of us in this area had to evacuate our homes because of the large interface forest fire that uh, consumed uh, much of our timber in this area. It's brought on hard times, but it nearly um, destroyed our infrastructure and our, our homes. And uh, we're thankful to the Lord that the, uh, the fire uh, just had minimal damage compared to what it could have been. And we can see from that example of how great a fire starts from just a small spark and um, that's the subject of the podcast today is God talks about fire in the Bible and um, I'd like to turn to James chapter 3 and if you'd like to turn with me to that book and if you have your Bibles handy James 3 starting with verse 2 it says we all stumble in many ways if anyone is never at fault in what he says, he's perfect, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and itself is set on fire by hell itself. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by a man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grape vine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So when we look at this passage of scripture and we reflect on what the writer of James is saying to us, we're drawn to the, the spark analogy and how a great forest fire is set ablaze by just a small spark. And um, we're also told about how it's like inside of a person is a stream of water that flows forth from the tongue. And there's salty springs and there's fresh springs. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit has come and has made his residence within you. The Bible says that you're born again, that you're a new creature in Him. And the Holy Spirit comes and makes His residence within you. 
The Lord is the source of living water. He is the source of the fresh water that's within the believer. So when you think about it, if salt water comes out of a fresh water spring, it's puzzling because this should not be. Likewise, what can be very positive with a spark in that it can bring heat to your home and can help you to cook your meal and it can bring a great deal of cheer on a cold day and warm you to the very core. It can also destroy everything around you. It can ruin homes, livelihoods, and bring calm into chaos. See, there's two kinds of fire. And the two kinds of fire are resident within the heart of man. Now, as a, as a Christian, the Holy Spirit has made his residence within us. And we speak forth the word of life the living water of God as we yield to the Holy Spirit. But there is a war raging against the old man. and In the old man, there is selfishness. In the old man, there is bitterness and cursing and blame. And uh, it's so easy for us, if we're not careful, to get our eyes off of the Lord. And the Bible says that if we walk in step with the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Sometimes, particularly when we're at home and we're not busy working, we can, we can become busybodies and we can start to think about things that aren't really issues and problems that we have never really resolved boil to the surface and we can get a burr under our bonnet and we can even begin to think about other people as being the problem when in fact there's a problem within us. And when that starts to happen, our mind is taken away from the Lord and we begin to look at the circumstances. We begin to blame. Maybe some of you have followed what's happening with the pandemic. It's popular to blame everybody for what's happening. And I wouldn't want to be one of the politicians in charge of the countries of the world right now because it doesn't matter what they do. Someone is going to cut them down and find blame with them. As Christians, we need to set an example of faith, of love, and of purity. And find sometimes that when we get tempted to start doing the blame game, pointing our fingers everywhere else, we need to think about what it is that we're doing and saying and, and have self-control. We need to pray to the Lord to help us to control our tongues and control our thoughts and turn our focus towards things that are beneficial for uplifting, beneficial for helping, beneficial for contributing, rather than tearing down. There's enough problems in the world right now caused by folks that are prioritizing the wrong things and their minds are filled with panic and they're looking to blame someone or something for what's occurring. Now you, my brothers and sisters, have the Holy Spirit if you are a believer in Christ. Yield to the Spirit. Let Him take your tongue and may the fresh water of the Holy Spirit flow in, uh, in a stream from your very being. You see, if we don't yield to the Spirit and we get our eyes on the waves and the storms around us, soon we find ourselves pulled into old behavior patterns and we find ourselves stepping into the realm of sin if that's us we need to repent and ask the Lord to give us strength to see things from his perspective now fire can be good the fire of the Holy Spirit is something that's good it, it burns in holiness it consumes darkness and evil and brings warmth to our spirit. But strange fire, fire that is not of God, comes forward and it causes destruction wherever it goes. Now, if we're controlled by the spirit, there is life and peace. But if we're controlled by the flesh, we cannot please God. And we find that 
we cause a lot of damage. Just like wildfire without control causes damage. Consider that small spark that could be good, but out of control spreads into the forest and creates such a natural disaster as what we faced in 2017. Well, brothers and sisters at home, there's going to be temptations for us, for our minds to wander to things that are unprofitable. And if we're consuming steadily the media that's out there, that's focused on the pandemic, and we're not spending time in prayer with the Lord or spending time in His Word, very soon we'll find that our hearts will be turned away from what we need to be focused on during this time. And we'll get caught up with the panic and the, the things that are taking place around us. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be concerned about it, but God wants us to be contributors of fresh water in a time where saltiness is abounding out of the hearts of every one around us. So my prayer this afternoon is that you would think about these things, that you'd ask the Lord to strengthen you, to fill you with his Holy Spirit, and to pour forth from you with rivers of living water that bring healing to this land and to the people around us. Again, may the love of God shine through you to the people that need it. There's so many people out there that don't know. They're in a state of panic, in a state of flux. They're losing their investments. They're thinking about their health. They're worried about their jobs. Lord, help us to be filled with the fire of your spirit, contained within us and under control to bring warmth and to bring goodness wherever we may take it. Forgive us for the times, O oh God, where we let our tongue get out of control. Well, I pray that that's something that we can chew on a little bit and God bless you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for the illustrations that you give in your word. We thank you that the fire of your Holy Spirit is holy fire. And it is under control by your spirit, Lord, and it brings warmth. And it does good to us and to the people around us. Lord, forgive us for getting our eyes off of you sometimes and turning our face towards things that we have no control over. And Father, forgive us for the times where we start to fall back into patterns that are unhealthy and that are salty. And God, we pray that you'd give us self-control, for that is part of the fruit of your Holy Spirit living within us. I pray that you'd strengthen my brothers and sisters, and if they've fallen in error to gossip or to speaking negatively, God, I just pray that they would, they would know that your grace has given them freedom from sin. But also, Lord, may they draw close to you, may they draw near to you in prayer. We thank you, God, that we have an advocate in you, Lord Jesus. You hear our requests, and when we don't measure up, Lord, when we make mistakes, you speak to God on our behalf. And your, your goodness draws us close back to his side. We thank you for the closeness that there is in knowing you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.